If you thought I was done with collectible key issues of comic books that are under $20, you must be out of your mind. We are continuing that conversation in this video today. Coming at ya! Hello to all of my cheapo Filippo geeks. This is Dante D here and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. A few weeks ago, we posted a video going over some key issues of comic books that you could add to your collection for under $20. Yes, yes, it is true. You do not have to dish out hundreds upon hundreds upon thousands of dollars to have key issues in your comic book collection. But before we get right to it, just want to remind you all to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Leave a like, leave a comment that will automatically enter you in the 10k subscriber giveaway which we are doing on this channel. Basically, as long as you are subscribed to the channel and you are actively participating in conversations, liking videos, basically if I know that you exist, you are automatically entered. Once this channel reaches 10,000 subscribers, we will be going live and doing a draw to give away one of many fabulous comic book prizes. If you want to see what is being given away, a link to a video that showcases some of the prizes is in the description. Also, if you would like to help support the channel, check out our new merch store. The link is in the description. Our featured tee today is this one here. I survived the snap, did you? Well, obviously we did because we're still here. You can showcase that by wearing this fabulous design right here. This geeky tee and many others just like it are at the merch store. Follow that link once you're done watching this video and take your pick. So with that out of the way, let's get into this list, starting off with our first book, which is Superman, The Man of Steel, number 17. This is the first cameo appearance of Doomsday. And if you don't know who Doomsday is, well, he is a villain who is kind of responsible for killing off Superman, well, temporarily, sorry to spoil it for you, but temporarily back in 1993. Highly recommend picking up the Death of Superman trade paperback. I know everyone kind of looks at this book as, 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 as a huge gimmick and this event is a huge gimmick, but it actually is a pretty good story. So I recommend you pick it up if you're interested in it. Link is in the description. Next up is a book that some of you may not know about, and that is House of Mystery number 290. This one may be kind of flirting with the $20 line, maybe be even slightly above $20. You might see some listed for $50, but it is not impossible to currently get this book for around the $20 mark. What is the significance of this book? Well, actually, this is one of my favorites, and unfortunately, I don't have it in my collection. I actually would really like to add this to my collection. Uh, this is the first appearance of Andrew Bennett, who is I Vampire. Uh, some of you may not know that title, but it is an awesome horror title. It's, it's kind of a niche type horror title. It's, uh, it's really kind of particular, but um, they actually did a, a new 52 run of I Vampire, and uh, it was great. It was by Joshua Hale Filyakov. Uh, I absolutely loved it. It only ran like 19 or 20 issues and then they canceled it. I was really upset when they canceled it. But uh, Ivan Empire is actually really, really cool. Uh, for the longest time, uh, he ran as a, as a feature in House of Mystery in the 1980s. If you'd like a complete kind of overview of I Vampire, I suggest picking up this trade paperback, which is by J.M. DeMatteis, who's one of my all-time favorite comic book writers. He's really, really kind of dark, and I, I love that kind of style. I also recommend picking up the New 52 I Vampire trade paperbacks, which are by Joshua Hale Filyakov. Again, really great, and some really stunning, jaw-dropping art by Andrea Sorrentino. He just has this really, really aggressive, um, angry type art style, which I think is perfect for a book like this. If you don't know who he is, um, he's actually a uh, an artist who's gained a little bit of, um, of recognition for his work on Old Man Logan. Uncanny X-Men number 160. This is the first appearance of Ileana Rasputin as an adolescent, and she is the sister of Colossus. This is also the first appearance of Sim, and this book here just happens to precede my all-time favorite issue of Uncanny X-Men, which is Uncanny X-Men number 161. This one here isn't too significant. It's just a great story, and it kind of goes over um, Magneto's background as a Holocaust survivor. In our last video, we talked about Wolverine number 8, which is just a really classic 
cover. Um, the next book that I'm talking about is also a book that I believe I've talked about in the past, and that is Wolverine number 10. This is the first Wolverine and Sabretooth battle in a Wolverine comic. Uh, this is this is a great book. Uh, people absolutely love this book. It has an amazing, amazing cover. I also suggest, uh, if you can, to pick up the reader's pick for this one, and that is the Wolverine Omnibus. This book here, I was, I was looking at it. I don't have it, but I, I had access to one and I looked through it and I have to say, if you are a die-hard Wolverine fan, you have to have this Omnibus in your collection. It has every single significant Wolverine story you can think of and it's just amazing. It has the, the Frank Miller, Chris Claremont Wolverine. It has the first few issues of uh, the ongoing Wolverine series run, which includes these books here. Uh, it has the Weapon X run. It's just it's just full of Wolverine greatness. If you'd like to pick this book up today, link is in the description. Thor number 412. This is the first full team appearance of the New Warriors. <laughs> no, <laughs> not those New Warriors. These New Warriors. I actually didn't know that this was the first appearance of the New Warriors. I thought the first appearance of the New Warriors was New Warriors number one. So yeah, there you have it. They first appeared in Thor. Uh, but if you also wanted to pick up uh, the New Warriors number one, who were a hot team in the 1990s, uh, from what I understand, it's actually still relatively cheap. You might even be able to find it in a dollar bin. I don't have it, um, but uh, I haven't been able to find it. And on eBay, obviously the prices are stupid even for a book like this. I'm hoping maybe I'll be able to find it in a bargain bin somewhere whenever I eventually get out to a decent comic book store. Suicide Squad number 48, which is the origin of Oracle. And if you don't know who Oracle is, um, Oracle's, Oracle is basically Barbara Gordon. Uh, if you've read The Killing Joke, uh, you'll know that Barbara Gordon gets paralyzed from the waist down by the Joker. She gets a bullet through her spine, unfortunately. Uh, and from that moment forward, uh, she's in a wheelchair and she becomes a character known as Oracle. Another Suicide Squad book that you could pick up right now that is probably still in the under $20 range is uh, Suicide Squad number one from the New 52. The significance of this book is it is the first appearance of Harley Quinn in the Suicide Squad. I remember this book uh, kind of went up in price a little bit when the first Suicide Squad movie came out. Uh, I checked some of the prices uh, on eBay recently and I know they weren't as high as they were uh, when that Suicide Squad movie uh, came out. I thought it maybe, maybe would go up in price again when the Birds of Prey movie came out, uh, but it didn't. It's actually still relatively reasonable. Uh, Definitely uh, add this to your collection right now if you want to before some other Harley Quinn Suicide Squad thing comes out and this pr book goes up in price again. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's actually a very, very great, good read. Uh, if you just want to read uh, the New 52 Suicide Squad, check out the link in the description to uh, the Suicide Squad trade paperback. New Mutants number one. It is the first ongoing series featuring the New Mutants. I've actually talked about this book many, many times on the channel before. Uh, I love the New Mutants. Uh, the first like 20 or so issues of this run are just great. Totally worth it to add to your collection. Amazing Spider-Man number 529. This is the first appearance of the Iron Suit Spider-Man. Um, and obviously we know the Iron Suit Spider-Man is a uh, an integral part of the Marvel Universe right now. Uh, the Tom Holland Spider-Man always has the Tony Stark designed um, iron spider suit. So uh, you definitely could pick this book up for under 20 bucks right now. Why not? X-Men Origins Gambit number one. This is the origin, Gambit's origin uh, that is described. Uh, these This X-Men Origins run was absolutely awesome. Uh, if you want the complete X-Men Origins run, I recommend the reader's pick which is this trade paperback, which features all the issues of uh, X-Men Origins, which were done. The link is in the description. And lastly is a book that I've talked about many, many times because it's one of my favorite books from the 90s. Heck, I might've even included it in the video that I did before this one. And that is Spawn number one. Get this book. It is stupid, stupid cheap. It is the first appearance of Spawn. 
uh, the first ongoing series featuring Spawn, which is a series that is still going on today from what I understand. Spawn's an awesome character. Uh, definitely pick this book up, but if you want a more complete story, you can pick up the Spawn trade paperback, which is stupid, stupid cheap, really, really great value. The link is in the description. So that about does it for our video today. Really, really hope that you enjoyed it. Are there any other books under $20 that are worth picking up? Please, I would love to hear from you in the comments. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.